a life like many other people that is scientifically known as unbearably shit. So I do like to indulge in a bit of escapism every now and then. Netflix is my bae, games are my mistress, and books are my bottom bitch. The only problem with these is that sometimes they can be a bit shit too. How can I immerse myself in a story that is, well, bollocks? You never know what you're gonna get or how you're gonna react. So it's useful to do a little research and maybe pay attention to some reviews. Luckily, Alibaba D Books has our back in this murky world of spelling errors and plot holes. So lean back in your favourite armchair, stoke the fire to give a bit of ambience, and shove some sweet meats in your ugly face. It's book o'clock. Hello, book lovers. I'm Ali with Alibaba D Books. Oh right, your name is actually Ali. It wasn't some form of appropriation of the book 1001 Nights. Yeah, that's right. I do books too. And today I'm going to be discussing The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Yeah, black person holding up a sign that says hate. Standard, really. I can tell this is going to be one of those empowering books for white people, right? I discuss police brutality, murder, and rape in this video. I like all of those things. Carry on. I look at books as a form of activism. What? Because a lot of times they'll show us a side of the world that we may not have known about. Well, Star Wars novels show us the other side of the universe. It's still fucking fiction, but because it's a black author writing about black people, it would be career suicide for a critic to say this book is shit. Now, because of the political climate in our country... The same political climate that would label any white person giving critique on this book as racist? The very same political climate that would hammer a white author for writing a book about black people, the same political climate that allows Black Lives Matter to smash up businesses, properties and people while simultaneously perpetuating the myth that they're oppressed. Yeah, I'm sure this is a good book. And the political statements that have been made on BookTube. The fuck is BookTube? Sounds like a porn site for librarians. I want to make it very clear that I am not getting on a soapbox and preaching in this video. Okay, you hear that everyone? She's not preaching in this video. At least not this time, but take note of that. It might come in handy later. I am discussing the feelings that I had while I read The Hate You Give Bye. <laughs> Oh, 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 I seem to be holding the book upside down. How delightfully quirky. The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I am discussing what I personally took away from the novel. I got 20 quid on her taking a generous dose of white guilt from it. Any takers? It's not really a fair bet, but I'll give you decent odds. I'm not saying that you need to have the same experience. I'm not saying that you need to share my perspective. See, you say that, but you are, aren't you? If this is like any of the other videos I've covered, you're gonna go on to say your skin makes you part of the problem, and by extension, anyone who shares the same pigmentation as you is too. In short, if you use the word privilege, in relation to skin colour, that's exactly what you're saying. But go on, I don't want to judge a book by its cover, so to speak. Actually, I'm terrible for doing that. If it doesn't have a nice picture on the front, I'm like, shit book. I encourage you to read this book and to come to your own opinions, form your own conclusions, but more than that, just listen. Ah, see, now we're getting down to it. You have to listen, because it's a black person talking about black issues. Because fuck knows what would happen if they wrote a book that wasn't about skin color and prejudice. And how the fuck am I supposed to listen to a book anyway? Hold it to my ear and whisper to it, imploring it to reveal its secrets to me. You're mental, lady. Because while I am discussing this book and how I felt about it, ultimately, that's not the point. But this is a fucking book review! If that's not the point of it, what fuck it is? You're not saving lives or anything, Ali. You're talking about a wedge of dead trees with squiggles on it. The point is to take a step back, realize it's not personal, Realize this isn't about you and just listen. Again with the listening. Have you forgotten this is fiction, Ali? No one was told to take a step back and listen when reading Harry Potter or to not take the plights of half giants personally because it wasn't a preachy fucking book designed to induce white guilt into anyone foolish enough to pick it up off the shelf. And it had dragons in it, which really helps. Listen, be open-minded, keep an open heart, Try to be understanding, try to be compassionate, and try to have sympathy for... The fictional characters? 
the events in this story. This book is a young adult Black Lives Matter novel where the main character star witnesses the murder of her best friend at the hands of a cop. Oh, it would be by a police officer, wouldn't it? Never mind it would be statistically more realistic if her friend was murdered by another black person, but that wouldn't suit the current BLM narrative, would it? Fair play to the author, though. Way to pick the best time to cash in on a story like that. Wait for racial tension to heighten and bam, bring out a book about a black person getting murdered by a cop. I'm almost impressed. She is the only one who knows what happens and she struggles to find the confidence to come forward. Well, not reporting a crime is a crime in itself, so unless she wants those stats to go up, she better report that shit quickly and not piss about for 300 pages. If it's a case of police corruption and she doesn't know who's involved and therefore who to go to, fair enough. You gotta make a story out of it, aren't you? But if it's I can't report it because I'm black and they'll shoot me, you can fuck off with that shit. The Bible's less fictional than that. To share her story and to fight for her best friend Khalil in the courts, in the media, and it is a beautiful, heart-wrenching, funny story that I think everyone should read. Heart-wrenching and funny. Well, that is a veritable smorgasbord of emotions, isn't it? A tale of murder and apparent racism brought to you by Walker Books, the same people who publish Where's Wally? There's nothing like a book written for ages 14 and up to reinforce racial bias and perpetuate the idea that the police go around shooting people because of the colour of their skin. So, Ali, why should everyone read it? Why should everyone read it, you ask? Well, yeah, just then actually. Well, I am about to tell you. This book helped me realize why I am a privileged white person in American society. Yay! She used the word privilege in relation to skin color. This video is officially bullshit. Yay! That's not to say where my family stands in the socioeconomic scale. Yes, we all know the common rhetoric of privilege doesn't actually mean privilege in any way. It just means there are certain things you don't have to think about and it's fucking bollocks. I don't have to think about period pains. That doesn't make me privileged. It just doesn't apply to me. Which is basically whether or not you live in poverty, whether or not you're in the middle few, or whether or not you're in the top percent. This shit gets thrown around so much, I'm surprised you feel the need to explain it, Ali. You seem like an undone person, so let me lay this out for you. This idea of privilege, whether intentional or not, is attributing worth to people based on the colour of their skin. So by subscribing to this idea, you are actually creating that privilege. Not all white people have the same family, and not all white people come from a rich family. You see, by saying that, you're showing you associate whiteness with wealth. Of course not all white people come from a rich family. Not all people come from a rich family. That's finance and the only colour that matters where that's concerned is the colour of money. That's not the important part. The important part is actually just being white. Holy shit! Fuck the subtext, eh? Just plow on in there. Fucking hell. And I just said you seem like an undone person. Way to make me look like a fucking idiot, Ali. And the invisible benefits that you don't realize come along with that. If I do get invisible benefits because of the color of my skin, as you so retardedly put it, then how is it a problem? And I ask you lot again and again, but I never get a fucking answer. What benefits? And don't rattle off a list of things I don't have to worry about. That's not a benefit. It's just a lack of a similar downside. One of the things, not a spoiler, that really stuck out to me in this book was the fact that Star, shit name, when her father gave her the birds and the bees talk, he also had to give her the talk telling her how to act around cops to avoid getting hurt. That's not something that's gonna mess up a child for the rest of their life, is it? You ever acted suspicious around the police? Fuckers pick up on that quite easily. But yeah, make your children nervous of the authorities from a young age. That won't cause any lasting damage. He told her to make sure her hands were always visible, never to make any sudden movements. Don't commit any fucking crimes would be sound advice, really. The police aren't on commission or anything, chill out. I think there were a few other things that I can't remember, but just the fact that this is something that people of color deal with Please remember you read this in a fucking story. I'm not saying parents don't tell things like this to their children, but remember where you learned this. It's gonna be the kind of thing that if you're living in the ghetto. In the ghetto? Don't imply it's the kind of thing Barack Obama had to teach his children too. If you live in a neighborhood with a high crime rate, the police will associate you with it because they're not too keen on getting shot either. On a daily basis and have to teach their children is ridiculous. Probably stemming from the era when this shit was actually applicable to every black person. And we're talking way back when now, but somehow that chip on the shoulder has been passed down from generation to generation. Everyone's got family heirlooms, I guess, but passing down a fear of the police is just fucking stupid. Law enforcement should keep people safe. It shouldn't make members of their society teach each other how to stay safe 
from them. Again, Ali, this only applies to those in the hood, doesn't it? Association with crime in an area with high levels of it. Your problem is with geography. This shit doesn't happen in the fucking... Hamptons? That, that's, that's a posh area, isn't it? The other thing this book does a great job of doing is making you realize that in the cases of cops shooting people of color, you're blaming the victim. It really depends on why they were shot, doesn't it? If they were waving around an MP5, then yeah, you're gonna get popped. Skin color's irrelevant. That's not victim blaming, that's common fucking sense. Originally, when the news started breaking of all these shootings that were happening, by cops of people of color. I mistakenly fell into that mindset of feeling sympathy for the cops, feeling bad. For the person who took a human life and has to live with that forever? For the backlash of what had happened to them and their family by getting death threats, by getting physically attacked, when that's not the point. Sorry, their families getting death threats isn't the point. What has this book done to you, Ali? Did it reach inside you and crush your compassion? Did it stick its dick in your empathy? What happened to you, Ali? I'm worried. The point is, regardless of how the person of color acted to the cop, regardless of what happened in their life, regardless of the type of person they were, Fuck it, what if they're a criminal? Are you actually implying black people can't commit crimes or am I strawmanning the shit out of this? They were murdered. I'm not gonna lie, there was a lot of build up to what you said just then and what the fuck happened? Replay? Replay. They were murdered. How did you fuck up the word murdered? Are you the best person to be doing a book review if you have to jump cut halfway through a fucking word? And it's like my brain couldn't even wrap itself around that. So the way the story does that is her best friend Khalil is accused of being a drug dealer and he's accused of being in a gang. Star and Khalil, were they trying to hammer it into the reader's heads? These characters are black. Can't mention any spoilers, but I will say the way Angie Thomas writes this book, neither of those things matter. And at the beginning I was like, oh yeah, you know, maybe he is a drug dealer. Maybe he is a gang member. You mean a lawbreaker, right? A gang member, a drug dealer, a, a criminal. I thought I was strawmanning earlier, but now I'm actually starting to believe she thinks there is either no such thing as a crime, or more likely that a black person cannot commit a crime. Or is it me? I really hope it's me. Doesn't matter. In the end, it really doesn't matter. You've just mentioned two occupations almost certain to be armed. Are you fucking crazy? And the reason I realized I had that mindset of blaming the victim is I thought of women and rape. You've somehow managed to associate black people getting killed by the police with a woman getting raped. And there is still so much more of your video to go. When a woman gets raped, people ask, well, what were you wearing? Well, how did you act? Well, had you been drinking? Oh, for fuck's sake. Clothes, yeah, so the police can gather any evidence. Or shoot you for being black. But I still can't believe how you turned this around. It is the same thing as wondering whether or not a person of color who had been shot, if they were in a gang, if they were selling drugs. Those things don't matter because you're blaming the victim. It's the... How? Is she a genius or is she ass-clenchingly dense? I don't know. And worse than that... There's more? What's worse than being killed? Torture? Is it torture? A rape victim can at least speak out for herself and defend herself. A person who's been shot and killed can't. Well, thank you for that. Someone inform the judicial system. It turns out we've been wasting money on interrogating corpses. We thought they were just all working together, but we were wrong. We were wrong. Oh, can't believe I forgot to mention this earlier. Let me guess. You're schizophrenic. The main character, Star, has a romantic relationship with a white boy. Ah, oh, it's a big deal! And so not only does she deal with this Black Lives Matter movement, but she also deals with an interracial couple, and that totally comes into play in the story. But I love Chris. He is a goofball. He is so funny. Star, Khalil, and Chris. Is there a whiter name than Chris? Maybe Brent. I've never met a Brent. Tis a punchable name. He is so cute. You can see whether or not they can overcome their racial differences to be together, but I ship it. Uh, oh, I, I already paused it for the thumbnail. Really? Uh, racial differences. Ha! What's wrong with a black girl and a white guy, you racist bitch? Nailed it. It changed my life. It changed me as a person. It gave me a beautiful new perspective on the world that I didn't have before. Believing you're inherently racist doesn't sound all that much a beautiful world, Ali. It definitely opened my eyes to the point where I started reading a contemporary novel after this, and in my head I started picturing all the characters as people of color. Who gives up for- what does it matter? Really? It's fiction. You can picture them as fucking platinum furred gophers if you like. But oh no, good for you, Ali. Well done picturing black people. So progressive, you fucking simpleton. Which, 
even though the writer didn't intend, I did it. And I was like, go me, I'm being diverse. Oh my fuck, I'm done. This started off so well, didn't it? Back when it was about a book, then it changed to Black Lives Matter, then it was rape, then it was a book again. Kind of like one of those dreams as well fucked up. And when you wake up, you just lie there thinking about that dream and wondering how the hell you got from one part to the other. It was like that, but with racism. But then what did I expect from a review of a book called The Hate You Give? Personally, I'd have called it The Shit You Talk. Thanks for watching guys, special thanks to all my patrons for supporting this channel. If you have an overwhelming urge to be like them, the link is in the description. And remember, even the most racially progressive books are still in black and white.